In this example, we're going to see how to configure a reflexive access list. A uh, reflexive access list is based on named access list, so we cannot use numbered access list to, to do that. And we would like to allow traffic from LAN 1 to go to LAN 2, but not the opposite, in the opposite direction. So we don't want any host from LAN 2 to reach host in LAN 1, so only in this direction. Now, in order to start configuring the reflexive access list, we have to know that we're going to use named extended access list. And since we are dealing with named with extended access list here, they should be configured closer to the source. So the reflexive access list will be configured on router RTA. Uh, now let's see how to configure that. We are going to establish two different access lists, named extended access list. The first one will be outbound filter. It will control the packet, the outgoing packet from RTA to RTB. And the second one will be the inbound filter. It's going to control packet from RTB to RTA. So let's go to router RTA and start configuring that. The first thing we will do is to check if there is any access list already configured in the router. Let's have a look at the router at the uh, configuration file and see if there is anything. Well, everything is okay so far. So I will start configuring my named access list that I will call outbound filter, outbound filter. And the purpose of this filter is to allow traffic to permit IP traffic from host one to host three. But here we have to look at keyword. We have to use a keyword reflect. I want this traffic to have reflection, the reflection of this traffic to be allowed, which means the reply. When the traffic is replayed back, the reply, all the reply packet will be allowed access because they are permitted. So I'm going to add the keyword reflect. Reflect, but reflect what? We need to add also the name of the access list that's going to be created dynamically with the reflexive access list. So let's type, the name will be pink traffic, pink traffic. Okay, ping. Okay, this is a typo. Ping traffic. Uh, I'll do a similar thing. I want to allow traffic from host 1 to host 4. And I want the reply to be reflected. Same thing between host 2 to host 3. So all traffic between host 2 will be allowed to reach host 3. And it will be uh, rep replied back. So this is host 3. And finally, between host 2 and host 4. Right. Also, I want to create another extended uh, named access list that I'm going to call inbound inbound filter. And what is the purpose of the inbound filter? Is to evaluate the uh, reflected traffic and see whether it will allow it or not. So evaluate the traffic. So it's going to evaluate the uh, reflexive access list that we name it ping ping traffic. Okay, so now I can display here all the access lists that I have configured so far. So I have two access lists. So the first access list is named the inbound filter is going to evaluate the reflexive access list ping traffic that we name it ping traffic. The second name the extended access list is outbound filter. It defines the traffic uh, to be permitted from host one to host three and four and also traffic to be permitted from host uh, 2 to host 3 and uh, host 4. So the traffic will be permitted and then reflected reflected uh, with the name of the reflexive access, uh, reflexive access list, which is pink, pink traffic. Now we need to apply this uh, two name it the extended access list to this point here, it's the serial 1 slash 0 interface, because they are going to be uh, very uh, uh, important at this level, at this point. So I go to RTA, from RTA I access, I access the serial interface, right? And from here, access group, and then I will apply the name of the filter, outbound filter in the outbound direction, outbound direction. And then I'm going to apply the inbound filter in the inbound direction. So it's going to filter all the packets coming from RTB. Here we are. Let's have a look at the 
running configuration so the two filters are applied correctly to the serial interface one slash zero and based on the uh, inbound or out, outbound di direction and the these are the access lists that we have configured so now let's test and see if everything is working fine so normally from host one i should be able to ping host three and host four let's see that i'm in host one i'm going to ping host three well fine it's okay i will ping host four it works now let's check and see if from host two i'll be able also to ping host three and host four i'm in host two right and then i would like to ping 172 3101 it works fine very good also from host 2 i'm going to ping host uh, 4 it works fine now let's see if the other way around works so let's see if i can ping um uh from host 3 i can ping host 1 so i will check that can i ping host 1 no it's unreachable you see the filter doesn't allow that uh, from host 4 can I do the same can I ping host 1 from host 4 no it doesn't work you see it's unreachable I try to ping host 2 it's unreachable also let's then go to router RTA display again uh, sorry I will display the access list that are configured and you see that there are four dynamic uh, entries which are created for the reflexive access list ping traffic and these dynamic entries are created just to allow the reflected traffic to be permitted just to allow the reflected uh, the reflected traffic so the for example if I'm in host 1 I ping host 3 the reflected or the reply traffic will be coming from host uh, 3 from host uh, 3 for example to host to host 1 which is uh, this one, this rule here. So it is going to be, and this traffic is ICMP traffic, so it's going to be allowed using the reflexive access list. Of course, these entries which are added dynamically will stay there for small amount, for some amount of time, based on how much they are allowed to stay in the uh, in the router. After that, they are going to be flushed from the memory and if you want to uh, to ping another time uh, the dynamic the rules will be created dynamically again by the reflexive access list configured configured on router rta so to summarize the situation here a reflexive access list will say okay all the traffic generated from host 1 or host 2 is allowed to reach host 3 and host 4 on LAN 2 and then the reply the replied packet will reach the initiator of the traffic the uh, the host which initiated the, the uh, traffic but if any host on lane 2 wants to initiate the traffic to reach host 1 or host 2 on, on lane 1 it will not be allowed so this is one of the most important features related to reflexive access list Thank you for viewing this example with me. I am Hakim Adish. Bye.